another area I want to talk about is what I've taken a call in real-time marketing, which is the idea that we can use digital signals to make decisions in real time about uh, marketing communications, right? Um, let me give you a small insight. So oh, a couple of years ago, I had the chance to sit down with some of the great guys from uh, uh, American Red Cross and discuss with them the mobile donation data that they had, right? And by this, I mean, um, if you've ever heard it, right, on a lot of uh, podcasts, radio programs, for instance, uh, the Red Cross will do an ad where they'll basically say, hey, you know, there's a bunch of people who've been hit by this hurricane. If you want to uh, donate um, some money, text, the, you know, Red Cross to 90999 or whatever the number is. I'm probably wrong about what it is. And, and it struck me when I heard that story, those, that interesting insight, that this was a, a very interesting way to think about donations. Right? Because it's an immediate set of donations, immediate and small amounts, usually like five, ten bucks, like things in that range. Right? It kind of reminded me a little bit of the candy store at the grocery, the candy aisle at the grocery store. Right? You know, you're getting up to pay your groceries. There's this candy that's sitting right there. You can make an impulse decision. You can make an impulse decision to donate. Right? That was really cool. Right? So, a hypothesis came about. Right? The same users who are likely to be active on social media are also likely to donate via text messaging in this way. So could we use social media monitoring and insight into what was going on on social media to make optimal decisions on how to target donation requests, both in terms of content and uh, the, the timing and the targeting of that actual content, right? So we were able to acquire some data. Some of this was data I collected, that I collected with my students, uh, data from Hurricane Irene and Hurricane Sandy. So we had all the tweets that we could possibly collect of this data from both of these events. Uh, Hurricane Irene, if you don't remember, happened in August to September of 2011. Hurricane Sandy in October, November 2012, right? Uh, and in the end, just to remind you, Irene wound up not, it, it had a huge impact. It caused the big power uh, outages in Maryland, uh, but uh, it just wasn't as big as uh, people expected it to be, partially because it kind of died out before it got to New York City. Hurricane Sandy, or Superstorm Sandy, actually made it to New York City and caused a lot of damage, uh, practically going right up Wall Street. Right? And so to think about this from a conceptual viewpoint, here's our belief, right? You have these donations that are coming in, you have people paying attention to the hurricane, that these donations are driven by the attention, and that these same, uh, the same attention is also driving tweets. And so can we find this relationship between tweets and donations? So let's take a step back and look a little at the data. Um, what we found, right, is that in the Irene case, the, do, the tweet data, and this is just looking at the number of tweets per hour, started very high and then kind of faded over time because it turned out, as I mentioned, that the hurricane wasn't as bad as people had feared it would be. Sandy data on the other hand is very interesting. It starts kind of low and goes up and goes up and keeps peaking every now and then. And the story keeps going on and on as we continue to look at the data. And in fact, we can actually look at the tweets and where they were coming from over time. Uh, and it's kind of interesting to observe what's going on um, in terms of where the tweets are going from, what time it's happening. You'll notice, by the way, that there's this little red glowing dot right here uh, that's bigger than the rest. It turns out that's actually the hurricane. And at first we were a little confused because it looked like someone was tweeting from the center of the hurricane. And we're like, how can that possibly be? Well, it turns out there is isn't there is someone out there who actually is spoofing the GPS coordinates of the hurricane when they're tweeting, and they're tweeting things like the barometric pressure and everything like that. What's bizarre about this is that those GPS coordinates don't show up on most Twitter apps that you're looking at. Um, they show up in the metadata that we collect as part of our collection process, but they don't show up. So this is kind of like a, a secret message being sent to people who are actually looking at the real data as to what's going on. Uh, but it was useful for us because we could then use that little dot as an indication of the actual hurricane in our data. Uh, and here's the same data viewed for Sandy as opposed to um, Irene. And you'll see that there's some bigger spikes early on uh, in terms of the conversation and everything that's going on there. Also interesting, by the way, I'm, we're looking at a global map here. Um, I just happened to pull those ones up for this particular display. Uh, but, you know, there are conversations happening all over about uh, these hurricanes and these events, uh, people talking about them. Uh, potentially the connections between them and other individuals. So, so here's the question we started to ask and the question we first focused on, which is, 
given the fact that we can look at Twitter data and we can see these interesting impacts of what's going on, when would be the optimal time to tweet, or to, sorry, to send out a text message to all of the Red Cross's followers asking for them to donate to uh, the hurricane, right? To, to, to relief efforts for the hurricane, right? Um, and when we looked at, when we looked at the actual donation data and we looked at the actual tweet data, what we found is that basically the Red Cross sent out for Irene two different tweets, or two different text messages. One on August 29th and one on August 30th, both asking for donations. And those are when they got the most donations. So when they sent out those text messages, people respond, right? You get some background of people responding, you know, because they hear it on uh, This American Life or some other podcast, but a lot of it is when the Red Cross actually sends them a text message saying that they would like a donation. Now, of course, they can't send text messages all the time along these lines because it would, you know, eventually people would it'd be like spam. People would stop uh, uh, paying attention to them. But could we time those texts so that they maximize the amount of donations? And right away, when we talked to the American Red Cross about these results, what we showed them is that for Irene and for Sandy, I don't have that graph right here, but um, the, the text messages they sent out occurred well after the peak of interest in the hurricane. And so our argument was that, in fact, if you had moved these tweets, these text messages back in time, if you had had them earlier in the course of the event, you probably would have received more donations to help with the relief efforts. What we showed was that you could do a very good job of actually predicting uh, donations if you were to take into account the, the likelihood of there to be a Twitter activity in the near future. So what we actually do in our model is we actually use past Twitter activity to predict future Twitter activity and then we use that future Twitter activity to, plus past donation activity to help us predict uh, future donation activity. Because of this we can now use, since donation amounts seem to be related to treats, we can use the predictions of those tweets to predict when the Red Cross are likely to get more donations. We can then suggest optimal times to send out text messages asking for donations. And our results show that they could substantially, the Red Cross could substantially increase their donation levels by asking for donations much earlier in the crisis timeline. It seems, uh, you know, potentially that, we, that, that they have started doing this. And if you look at some of the more recent events, they do actually ask for donations earlier on in However, this is not the real, real-time. I mean, this is, a, this is a component of real-time marketing. But what I would love to see is not only using social media intelligence to make decisions about when to message, but also using it to decide what kinds of content to message. So you could imagine, for instance, that you could go to the website, you could go to the main um, uh, Red Cross page, and depending upon... What, where that individual was coming from and what the conversations on social media were right then that that individual was see seeing and hearing, that we could create a customized web page just for that individual. Now that, I think, would be real, real-time marketing, right? So now the content that everybody sees is unique based upon where the Red Cross, what, the, what message the Red Cross thinks is most likely to get across to them, right? Uh, and I think that's a powerful way to think about how we could use the the, the tools of digital marketing and the tools of digital media to truly advance uh, the field of marketing. Thanks.